good evening. We welcome to the communion Lord's Supper celebration at the Statesboro Primitive Baptist Church. I realize it's such an unusual gathering format, but I really believe the Lord Jesus is going to meet with you right in your home. I thank you, Lord, uh, and I thank you for your faithfulness. And I pray that the Spirit of God would be felt and the felt presence of God would just overrun any of the separation and the sadness that we might have in the back of our hearts for not being able to be together physically. We do have so much to be thankful for. And the thing about Jesus Christ and about the Holy Spirit and about God and about all the works of the Trinity, nothing can separate it. He's not separated by time or space. He's omnipresent. Uh, and as he comes, as he bids us to come, I pray that the Lord would bless us to rejoice anew in this great celebration. May the Lord bless us to rejoice, and to be thankful, and to be reminded of what Jesus has done for us. And he's done so much. And this service is not about COVID-19. I want you to just put that aside. I pray that it won't be about our problems, about our blessings, about the church, about the preacher, about our family. It is a personal way that we enrich our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's really about Jesus, and that's all this service is to be about. And I pray that the Lord would bless us to see that and be mindful of that this day. That he would cause us to be where we need to be. And I really believe that the sheltering in place that we've been through in the last few weeks is the great platform to get us away from the world in a sense, not that everything in the world is bad, but I do believe it helps us, it sort of forces us to fast in a way, and I know that you have thought more about God probably in the last few weeks than probably you ever had before, at least consistently. I know that you prayed more. Even though we may have been out of our comfort zone, not able to do a lot of things we like to do, and yet, we have come face to face with the understanding that God is the resolve of all this. He is our only help. He is our strength. He is our comfort when we lay down at night and when we rise up in the morning. So thank you and welcome to this service. And I pray that the Lord Jesus would be pleased with what we're about to do as we come to his table. You know, he says in his table, Probably on the church that you serve, it's here at Statesboro, on the communion table, the inscription, this do in remembrance of me. Let's do that and ask God to help us. Would you bow with me for a prayer? Oh, dear, most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we've come into your house, and that we can set aside, Lord, this world. We've been excited all day about this moment, anticipating, Lord, what it might be like we realize, Lord, there's so many services you've blessed us to gather in this very place and in the churches among your people. On the Thursday before Easter, Lord, we gathered and we broke bread. We passed a cup and we partook of it. And we remembered your great blessings and your precious broken body and your shed blood. And we've washed one another's feet and we've rejoiced and we've cried. And we've departed singing, Blessed be the time. We felt so much better and closer to you and one another. And so now, Lord, I want to stretch out and pray and ask you to help us do that. I pray that you bless every home, that you would strengthen their faith and their service to you, that you would mend their hearts and you'd take away their fears, and that you'd give them a boldness to serve the Lord Jesus and to glorify God in whatever they do, to shine in the darkness of this world. I pray, O oh Lord, that you'd comfort them. I pray, O oh Lord, that you'd bring us closer to you than we've ever been before. O oh God, we come to your table. This, this is not a menu that we might prepare, but it's one you have. And that's exactly what we need. We need nothing more, Lord, than your body broken for us. Nothing more than your blood shed for us. O oh Lord, help us to embrace it, embrace it in our hearts. Help it, Lord, to resonate in our souls and minds. And help us, Lord, to go in the strength of it to serve you better. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for forgiving us, and for giving us this opportunity. 
to bless your holy name at this communion table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wanted to share some scriptures with you. First from the Old Testament. You realize, I know you do, that the communion service or the Lord's Supper in the New Testament was taken from an Old Testament. Uh, the shadows and types of the Old Testament certainly are profoundly true. The Lord Jesus Christ and the great sacrifice. The Lord has always used sacrifice to bring his people to him. Why is that? First of all, we are God's people. He purchased our very soul by his blood. Uh, secondly, we have a tendency to stray away. We do. We will get away from God if we're not very careful. I know that I do. And so God has arranged it so that he could have a sacrifice made for us. And the ultimate sacrifice was the Lord Jesus Christ. It was just one time. He, he says that he, by the, his offering, uh, in Hebrews 10, 14, by the, his sacrifice, he is perfected forever, them that are his. But as we come, it's, it's this communion table. It's, it's not about being saved or getting saved. It's about believing. It's about people that, that God has quickened and called. So what God has done, and some of us have fought as an irresistible grace, as if we thought we were bigger than God in our life. But what has God done? He's brought us to ourselves, hasn't he? Maybe he's using this virus to do it right now. I believe God is at work as never before. I really do. But this is an opportunity. Some of us, uh, some of you probably have been raised in Christian homes and you never understood really and thankful that you haven't what being in bondage to sin really like but what a blessing to know that that jesus is that great liberator of our souls and so in the old testament the whole passover uh, regime was started uh, when god brought his people israel out of egypt you remember the last plague the death angel and god made a provision for them and he's made a provision for you and me those sinners we are that, that we would have life everlasting. And we ought to thank God for it and rejoice in it. And I want us to do that right at this table tonight or right in your homes at the table that you partake of there in Jesus' name. Well, in Exodus 12, the scripture says, and this is the account of the Passover in the Old Testament, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, and in the first verse, in the land of Egypt. And this is what God said. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak, God said, ye unto all the congregation of Israel, and say, in the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Notice they're in their house, just like you are. And so, and then if the household be too little, God made provision for the lamb, let him be his neighbor next to him house, come according to the number of the souls, every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Some of you may be gathered together tonight, maybe a group or maybe a family. And then in verse five, he says, your lamb shall be without blemish, not a, not a spot on it. Uh, no, no crippled lambs or sick lambs. And it has to be a male of the first year and you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. That's what God said do. You kill the lamb and you do something with the blood. And so God and Jesus on the cross, he killed the lamb. He died for you and me. And, and the blood is what speaks. Because when God sees the blood, that's what God notices. You know blood's the only thing God can't see through. He can't see our sin through the blood that was shed from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it wasn't a lamb, not an animal lamb. It was the lamb of God. And that's the only blood that suffices to pay our sin debt. And then in verse 7, he says, And they shall take of this blood and put it on the doorpost. And then in verse 8, They shall eat in the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And eat it not of raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head and his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain in the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall, ye shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's Passover. It's about God. It's about Jesus. 
You know that he says eating with haze because you got something to do. You're somewhere to go. You know, we're pilgrims and strangers on this earth. And so God has much for us to do. And so as we do, we need the strength. And God knew that his people would need strength. And God knows the strength we need is spiritual strength. It's not from the world. It's not from, from the pleasures of life. It's from God. It's soul. It's his being depth of our soul to face the trials and the, the, the aggravations of life. To face our own selves and our failures. And to forgive ourselves and forgive others. And, and rejoice in God's salvation. And here it is in verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I will smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood. I will pass over you. Listen that's what God says. He sees the blood he passes over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be to you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now I want to I want to run right over to the New Testament and and just before we open the table, look at in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we see the manifestation of Jesus Christ. See, the Old Testament uh, Passover, well, that was fulfilled by Jesus. That's just like Jesus, to fulfill all the Old Testament. He fulfilled the law for us. He kept the law for us. Uh, he is the ultimate sacrifice. But in verse uh, uh, 7, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, listen to the New Testament calling for this memorial service. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So I want you to see that. Uh, unleavened bread. We're about to break the bread. It's unleavened bread. What that means is unleavened or leaven in the, in the Bible always talks. It's a symbol of evil. And, and so we come to the table... We come repentant. We come remorseful for our sins. Uh, we come asking God to forgive us and really are serious about turning from our sins and following him. And, and you know, repentance is not a one-time deal. You don't, don't say, well, I've already done it. You know, it's a continue because we are sinners by nature. Even though we're saved by his amazing grace, we have a part of us that has a tendency to stray away from God. And so here it is. God says we have a Passover. But the unleavened part is the understanding that, that I come not practicing willful sin. That I have not known sin. I've confessed my sin. I don't want to stand before you people and try to make sense that I'm a sinner. I am. But, but I, I've come repenting of my sins and I confess that and there's a healing in that. And I want you to be that way as we come uh, in your homes or wherever you are. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ sacrificed for us. He that knew no sin, what? Became sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. That's, that's how it is. And what a blessing. So we can come to this throne of grace, this table, so to speak. Uh, boldly, not arrogantly, but humbly, but confident that our righteousness is Christ-centered. It's in Him and what He's done for us in His sacrifice. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread, <clears throat> excuse me, of sincerity and truth. Now, I wanted to refer to one more scripture, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in the Old Testament. It's the prophecy of Isaiah. But as we come to the Lord's table, it's important that we remember that we remember that's what it's to do. We're reminded it's presenting Christ afresh, uh, representing Christ. What does it represent? It represents Christ. Why? Because we need to remember what he's done for us in the past. My goodness, what a blessing that is to know. What he's doing for us right now. He is our hope. He is our strength. He is our strength every day. Oh, Lord Jesus, nothing is impossible. Without, with him, we can do all things. 
Without him, we can't do anything. And then also for the future. So, so we know that our future is in Christ. That's not in a stimulus package. Uh, it might help a little bit of the temporary pain, but really our stimulus is going to be Jesus Christ. And that is, gonna, that is our hope, and we have it. What a blessing. But in Isaiah, just a few verses, they kind of give us that mindset of what we're about to do and what Jesus has done for us. Verse 4 of Isaiah 53, listen to the word of God. Sure, he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. That's what Jesus did for us. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isn't that amazing what God has done for us? All we like sheep have gone astray, every one of us. You know Romans 3, 23 says all have seen. There's none good, not one. And that's so true. We have turned everyone to his own way into the Lord, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, I said a while ago, I believe this, the context of being sheltered in place and thinking about God more than we've had. We've almost like God's forcing us to do it. I think we've ignored him so much. Even in our church life, I think we're not careful. We can be caught up in the rigors of, of religion. And we need to shake it off, shake off religion and just enjoy God. That's what God is calling us to do and bless him and, and rejoice in him in that way. Because, you know, he tells us, doesn't he, to love God with our all, our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Now, I don't even know about you, but I haven't done that. And I want it, and I believe you do. But what, what this kind of life we're living has made us getting closer to that, don't you think? It really does. And so when we come to that, it's got some of that leaven out of our lives as we come now and as God would prepare us to rejoice in his great salvation. May the Lord bless his table as we come at this time. Brother Donald, would you come and be a part of this? The Lord Jesus uh, in Matthew chapter 26 uh, talked about with his disciples his body being bread. He said, this is my body. And he says that his body is broken for us. And he said, take, eat. You remember he said he took the bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body. Now the body that he's talking about, it's not like a, a literal body of Jesus. Uh, what it's like is, it's like a, uh, uh, picture I have a picture on my wall where I do some exercises during the week and it's my family and I watch I see them as I do this elliptical they'll keep my knees from folding but I look at them and it's people I love but it's it's a picture it's not really them but it's a representation of them. so so that's what we're doing and that's what Jesus meant as he said this with his disciples because when he said that is obviously he still had his flesh on his body and meant to eat my body as far as the flesh literally he meant and he had blood running in his veins but he said this is what it represents so as we take this bread it represents the the body of christ brother donald and as you take it in your homes i want you to think about his broken sinless body broken for you what that means is jesus kept the law Okay? Perfectly. He never sinned at all. But, but that, what that means is that when he died on the cross, his righteousness, keeping that law, that broken body, made it so that through the sacrificial system that God had set up and God was satisfied with, his broken body was required. It had to be flesh. It couldn't be an animal. It had to be a human. That's why the virgin birth was necessary. So Jesus came and, and, and he lived upon this earth. 
for 30 some odd years and he, he never once sinned and he went to the cross. And, and this, what is so profound is his body, he never sinned, was given to us, his righteousness. And our sins was given to him. So, so what that means is, what a blessing it is. So the tomb was empty. When the tomb was empty, when Jesus rose again, that was a seal that our sins was paid. That his body that was broken was not in vain. So it would be like this. If you had a dresser drawer in your house, and, and in that top drawer was all the sins you'd ever committed, and all the wrongs you'd ever done in life, or all the things you should have done that you never did, and if there was a drawer that could put all that in it, because Jesus has kept the law, that his precious body has been given to you as far as his righteousness goes, uh, that drawer would be open. It would be empty, just like the tomb. There would be nothing in it. There would be nothing, no, no writing against you. He's taken it off. And so what a blessing. So as we take of this bread, I pray that God would give us the spirit of Christ in remembering that his broken body, he suffered horrifically for us. You know, that it ought to deter our sin, even our mind, so much. Would you blood pray with me as we prepare, prepare to take this bread? Dear most precious Heavenly Father, thank you for dying on the cross for us. I pray that each of us can say that individually, God. I'm, I'm really not worthy even to call out my name. I'm holding this symbol of representation of you what you've done for me. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us all to be more thankful, to realize, Lord, that it's not by default that we get to heaven. It's because you have given us, all of you. You've broken your body. you suffered. you hurt those nails and the spear and all that it was, the whippings that you took, the mars on your precious face, the slaps, the curses. Oh, God, we just bow before you. And we thank you. Help us never to complain again, oh God, because you are our bread of life. You're all we need. And we thank, oh God, that you've given us just one crumb from your table. It's enough. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said in that Matthew account after that he took the bread and he blessed it and uh, he told them it was his body take and eat it. He took a cup and he said this cup is my blood take and drink for remission of sins. So as we partake of the cup uh, we want to remember that because of the shed blood of Jesus our sins are forgiven. Amen. So when we think about the blood, you know, God is real plain, and I know I'm talking to Bible students, but I think it's good for us to, to be reminded of the importance of the shed blood and the joy that the wine, grape juice represents, uh, the fruit of the vine, anyway. And you know, we're to have joy because we have the Spirit of God within us. And, and that joy is our strength. You remember the old Passover session that we read about in Exodus chapter 12. They were to go in the strength of that. And you know, we're facing a lot of trials and doubts and fears in our world today. But we only have joy. We have joy and we have peace because God's blood was shed for us. And what a joy it is to rejoice in that and to know. You know, his word says, the soul that sins shall die. And he says, there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And so God is very plain on that. And so what a blessing to understand that God has always made a provision. And this provision we couldn't make ourselves. It's, it's even greater than rain. I mean, you know, it's something that only God can do. 
But God did it, and he did it for you. He did it for me. And what a blessing to rejoice as we come together. No matter where we are, we can have joy. We can feel the love of God. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8 that nothing can separate us from the love of God. You know why? Because the blood of Christ was shed for you. Do you think that God's Son, only begotten Son, would shed his precious blood and then let this world just take us away or some virus destroy us? You know what? You are purchased, your very soul, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by silver and gold, but by his precious blood. And so as we rejoice at his table, may God bless us to remember and to thank you so much for his shed blood for us. Because that's what it took to get us across the great divide, to bring us to God. There's no way to God except through the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you bow with me? Dear most precious Heavenly Father, once again now, Lord, we hold this cup. And I pray, O oh Lord, as we hold this cup, we remember the blood that was shed for us. Remember, Lord, what you've done for us when we couldn't do a thing. Remember your great salvation that was coveted even before the foundation of the world. And yet, Lord, you've brought us to faith and you've quickened us. And yet, Lord, we've been so arrogant at times. We've been so doubtful and fearful. Oh, Lord, forgive us and bring us now closer right to your feet and embolden us, Lord, by knowing that your blood was shed for us. And we're going to take this cup and we're going to remember, Lord, what you've done for us. And we're going to thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. And we're going to not whine and we're not going to doubt and fear as much as we've done before. And we're going to be forgiving. And we're going to forgive one another and we're going to love one another. And we thank you, Lord, if it would be your will to open your churches where we could, that we would rejoice more than ever in the very assembly of togetherness once again. But for now, Lord, we thank you so much for your shed blood. And we pray, O oh Lord, too, that we would take this cup and drink all of it and understand, Lord, that would be your will in a way for our lives, that we were willing, O oh God, right now to make a fresh commitment to you to serve you. And whatever journey you have left for us to go on, whatever uh, obstacles of uh, situations in our life that we're to face that we'll have the strength and we'll know that you're provided just like you did Abraham when he was about to slay Isaac a ram caught in the thicket and that ram Lord was Jesus a likened type to our Lord and Savior you took our place as we take this cup may Lord we be your workers may we be uh, energized to serve you and bless your holy name in Jesus name amen we thank you so much for being here tonight I pray the Lord will bless you with a most special Easter as he moves causes us to work out that salvation that he's given us. What a greatest opportunity to have. But I really appreciate you joining us. Um, I pray that the Lord will bless you and your churches and your families, wherever they are. And the stakes for a primitive Baptist church, I say to you, I miss you so much. And uh, maybe the Lord will bless us very soon to be back together. Um, thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, we're going to listen to a verse of Bless Be the Tide. You know, we always gather, and I can just see you right now around this great room, you in the church, holding hands and rejoicing. You remember hugging one another like we've always done. May the Lord bless us. We live in a different world. I know we are, but boy, those are special times, gracious times. I'll never forget them. So let's ask the Lord to bless us as we depart uh, with this last uh, moment of grace as we silently bow and listen to Blessed Be the Time. May the Lord bless you. 